All right, good Tuesday. I'm gonna turn it around a little bit. Had a little bit of hot water problems today, so wasn't quite able to get the morning show going. We wish we could have been on for that, but unfortunately we had a few, <clears throat> excuse me, icicles to chop out of the shower for this morning, so things got a little bit uh, problematic around here. <clears throat> Leak has been fixed. And thanks to uh, Higgins Electric for doing a great job on getting things taken care of once again on a very old socket from what it looked like from the water heater that had gone through. So definitely glad to be back with you now. It is Tuesday evening. It's about 20 minutes before 8 o'clock and things are decently quiet for the time being. We're probably not going to be seeing too much in the way of cooler weather immediately, but as we go into the next couple of days, Things are going to be looking a little bit better. We'll talk more about what that looks like coming up here in just a little while, so stick around for that. We'll have more details on the tropics, which unfortunately we have some other problems to talk about exactly where we do not need them, and we'll talk more about what that looks like coming up here in just a little bit. If you have any plans for outdoors over the course of the next couple of days, do have the potential of getting some of that in, but unfortunately it is going to be a little bit on the problematic side for a lot of outdoor activities into the way of heat and humidity. And we're also going to be taking a look at what's coming your way when it comes to, again, the possibility of seeing uh, anything out there in the skies for later on tonight. We have a solar storm of sorts dropping on through. It's not that much. It's called a coronal hole. Yes, you can make jokes if you want to, but unfortunately what we're going to be looking for is just basically a high speed speed stream of wind coming off the solar surface and we'll talk more about what that looks like and what we're expecting coming up here in just a little bit. Got you live on Periscope and Twitter for tonight. Give me just a second while I get in our Facebook uh, people and get everybody going on the evening show for tonight and seeing again some pretty quiet if not very warm once again conditions across the area was a little bit on the toasty side out there from earlier tonight but as of right now we should be looking if everything works I think some fairly cool weather is going to be heading our way in the course of the next couple of days we'll talk more about that coming up here in just a little bit welcome to everybody who's tuning in on Facebook for tonight again the questions for the week are going to be what's going to be going on with the heat and humidity and also what's going to be going on where it comes to the possibility of more hurricanes across the Mid-South. Could be, again, just a little bit of a problem uh, coming up that direction as we look into the course of the next couple of days there. So much of what we're seeing for right now is really just not that much uh, in the way of a major amount of problems for us immediately, but could be some changes coming up a little later on. Questions, concerns, comments, please join me at austin.onic at wreg.com. If there's something on here you would like to see, we'd love to know more about it, but we can't show it if you don't send us and let us know a little bit more about what exactly it is you'd like to see on here. We've done uh, military weather in the Mid-South area, and we also in points beyond for various locations, so we're going to try to uh, keep that up if at all possible. We're going to see about giving uh, everybody a little bit more about the way of climate data. More information about climate and science and all kinds of other stuff uh, coming up for the rest of the day and the rest of the week on my Facebook page. So you should be able to find out at least a little bit more there. All right, we are back with Facebook again, assuming that it sticks around for the time being. I've blathered on long enough here, so we'll go ahead and work our way toward Germantown City Hall Cam, which again, showing a lot of overcast skies, pretty nice sunset just earlier tonight, and really not that much going on. By the way, if you can't stick around for all this show. We usually go about 10-15 minutes or so. If you can't stick around for the whole thing, uh, take a look right there in the blue bar. That will give you the forecast data for the rest of the evening and into tomorrow as well. Social media, including my Facebook page, email address there, also up there. And don't forget about our weather page here, WREG.com. Currently, again, you can see those clouds out and about around Germantown City Hall for tonight, looking off toward Poplar and Mendenhall. Poplar Pike lit up quite nicely, and Germantown Parkway as well, pretty quiet at this point. Radar is showing a little bit more activity back to our west. We do not have, again, a lot going on, but we do still have some sprinkles out there, and much of this, as it drifts a little bit closer to us, is falling into very dry air. Kevin Dunn and Randy McDonald, welcome to the show on Facebook for tonight. Glad to have you along. Currently, again, some showers, so the farther you go towards Little Rock, the more chances you're going to have of getting some more rainfall out that way. So why is this rain not making its way into the Mid-South. We'll 
talk about that coming up here in just a little bit. The dry weather will continue out there, it looks like, for quite some time to come. Currently at this time, the good news is that things are relatively quiet up there on the sun, but we do have, again, what's called a coronal hole taking place, and this is going to be sending a high-speed solar wind blasting toward the Earth in the next couple of days. Could be good for, again, uh, the possibility of maybe some auroras up that direction, and if you'd like to know more about this, all you have to do is go to the space Weather Prediction Center. It's swpc.noaa.gov, and that's a great place to go to to get more information about what goes on uh, up in the sky and how that can affect things that are going on down here on Earth. And it's a good place to take a look at uh, radio blackouts and all sorts of things like that that uh, may be happening out there. In fact, the radio communications dashboard is a very cool place to go to uh, to find out what's going on. This could affect, again, things like uh, GPS and things like that. Uh, Kevin Dunn, not quite on that, uh, but we'll take a look at earthquakes coming up here in just a little bit, so stay tuned. Uh, Aurora is pretty weak at this time, currently expected over the next half hour to be way up toward Hudson Bay, so it does not look like it's going to be, again, too much of a major concern where we are for tonight. Uh, no major amounts of storms taking place, but again, we'll watch these things pretty carefully. Hurricanes are, again, a little bit limited these days, thanks in part to that atmospheric dust, all that yellow and green making its way off of the Sahara and that is going out over the Atlantic and doing a good job of filtering out sunlight which is making it less possible for getting anything in the way of hurricanes to develop and that's why we haven't had a lot of stuff going on over the last few days. However, there is a bit of a problem because as we look down toward the Central American coastline, we've got another storm system brewing. Actually two of them right now, one of which is just between Cuba and Florida, and this one again doesn't really look like much. 10% uh, chance of anything really continuing to develop out of this uh, for the next two to five days. So again, this does seem, again, significant development of this early on. Uh, wind gust of 40 to 50 miles per hour with some of the showers and thunderstorms down that direction, but does not at this time look like it's going to be a threat to Florida, the Keys, the Bahamas, or the East Coast states. Now that's good. Now, unfortunately, we've got yet another one way on down into around Nicaragua and Panama. This one, on the other hand, looks a lot more healthy. This one is a possibility of seeing uh, 50 to 70 percent developments. Now that may seem far away and doesn't seem like too much of a threat for us at this point in time, but, whoops, where to go, uh, the water down in that direction, if that continues over its path expected to go northward, it could go over some very warm water and that could aggravate it and keep it moving a little bit farther and a little bit faster. It does not have a name yet and unfortunately a lot of the computer models at this time have this thing running right up over Nicaragua and back down toward around the area of El Salvador and into around portions of Belize once this thing gets a little bit closer to the Yucatan Peninsula. Some of the computer models have this thing going up to the United States and then pulling a hard right-hand turn. Uh, several days from now, it looks like maybe about a week or so, that this thing could be in our neck of the woods. But again, this is very preliminary, has a possibility of happening, but again, doesn't look like anything huge immediately just yet. But this is something that we will uh, see for all that on there. Uh, Kevin Dunn, working on machinery. Cool. Uh, my grandfather was an electrician, and so is my Uncle Randy back in Jeff City, Missouri. Uh, yeah, the 24VDC uh, for computer control systems. Yeah, well, this thing was, uh, according to the electrician, uh, said it was something along the lines of about maybe 30 years old, so it was probably just asking to get taken out by something, but uh, it was probably past its time, but fortunately, God... Thank you very much. Nothing actually came of this, so no fires or anything else to worry about, so good news on that. More information about the tropics, including a lot of these computer models that you're seeing us look at here, uh, you can go to SpaghettiModels.com. That's Mike's weather page at SpaghettiModels.com. Spaghetti Models, again, so named because they look like a mess of spaghetti on the plate, so it's a great place to go to to get tons of information. A little bit closer to the Mid-South area, we've got winds mainly out of the 
southeast and going to continue throughout the rest of the evening tonight. Got a lot of warm air up there. We'll keep our eyes on the tropics over the next few days as well as this thing continues to develop. Lots of moisture back over toward Little Rock into around Arkansas, Missouri, Oklahoma, and Kansas for tonight, but really not that much here in the Mid-South. We got just a little bit of dry air taking place at this time. Uh, very dry, in fact, for the Mississippi River. We've got, again, uh, the river at about its 11th lowest period, and that's at about six and a half feet. In the next few days, it's expected to drop down to around 7.1, which would take it into around uh, some fairly good record low territory. Some of the river boats are having to dock at Mud Island instead of Beale Street Landing. And this is going to continue for the next several days until we get some rainfall in here. If you'd like to see more about this, very good page from the National Weather Service and the Advanced Hydrologic Prediction Service. Tons of information about rivers and streams across the Mid-South and for that matter across the entire country. All you have to do is just click the hover mode and it'll give you uh, more information about what that looks like out there according to the stream flow data out across the Mid-South. So a very good place to look to for places like that. High pressure remains well in control back toward our east off the east coast and that's doing a good job of deflecting anything from moving our direction. So as of right now, again, we've got tons of rainfall, some pretty good storms out into the plain states. It would be nice if something would move our direction, but then high pressure over the Carolinas just basically just says, nope, not going this direction. Sorry, you can't make it in, that direct, in this way. So all those nice cold fronts, which could cool us off and give us some nice rainfall, high pressure just basically blocking that stuff until further notice. Until that weakens, not much is coming our direction anytime soon. Bozo Wolfolk, welcome from Senatobia again. Thank you very much for tuning in. One of our regular viewers here. Any chance of anything cooler or stormy out that direction? No, in a word. There's not much going on. Seven-day hazardous weather outlook has nothing going on in the next few days. High temperatures today. We're back in the 80s. Going to be looking again for high temperatures again tomorrow. Back into the lower to mid-80s once again. Chances of rainfall? Yeah, not that much going on at this point. Point, really just pretty quiet across much of the area. Bethany Bircher, my goddaughter, welcome from uh, Topeka, or she's still you still down in Emporia at this point, so campus, okay, that makes sense. Uh, a lot of humidity up there. My goddaughter, Bethany Bircher, uh, in her senior year at Emporia State uh, University in Emporia, Kansas, great school, great place to be, very proud of you. Uh, keep up the good work and give your brother a sock in the arm for me, if you would. For the rest of the day, again, looking at temperatures, and my mom said it's also pretty humid up there, too, so you got good company uh, of that direction in, in and around Topeka. Low temperatures for Wednesday night, lower to mid-60s to upper 50s once again, with, again, that slight chance of a shower dwindling and moving away from the area. High temperatures on Thursday and back into the mid-80s. And unfortunately, let's go ahead and stretch it on into Friday and temperatures, you know, just basically exactly uh, the same out there. Mike Launius, yes, good moonrise going out there tonight. Uh, beautiful view, few clouds around, not doing too badly out there. Uh, looking into the weekend, go. that's uh, where we also see, again, the potential of some still some warmer conditions out there back into the mid-80s or so. Sunday, a possibility of more showers and thunderstorms coming our way. Not much, but we'll take what we can get at this point. And highs still on the warm side back in the mid-80s. I'm going to stretch it through next Monday, and you'll notice that we have, again, a little bit more chance of rainfall out there, about 30%, and high temperatures on Monday back into the lower 80s to upper 70s. And unfortunately, that's as far as this particular forecast goes. So on our seven-day forecast, things are going to be a little bit better as we go toward next Tuesday. But it's going to take some time to get there. And after that, there are signs, very few, but they are still there, that we may see the possibility of some temperatures maybe back in the 60s as we get toward the end of next week. So hopefully that will continue into the course of the next few days. I uh, wanted to update everybody. If anybody's uh, tuning in tonight, well, it's probably a little early for right now, but the meeting's probably getting out at Itawamba County in Mississippi, at Fulton, Mississippi for tonight. If you're in and around the area of Jackson, Tennessee, the meeting tomorrow night will be held at the Madison County EOC 239 Grady Montgomery Drive in Jackson, Tennessee. And this again will be uh, later on uh, the area tomorrow night. Another one coming up 
Uh, Wednesday night, it looks like on, or pardon me, see, wait a minute, tonight is the Tuesday, the third. That's tonight at Jackson, Tennessee. Pardon me, I'm getting ahead of myself. Next one will be coming up in t uh, Carroll County, Tennessee, Huntington, Tennessee. That'll be next week, tonight at 6.30. Next one after that will be on Thursday, uh, the 12th, Fayette County EOC in Somerville, Tennessee. And many more of these coming up throughout the next few days and weeks because we need everybody to be ready uh, for severe weather out there. Uh, Mike Lonius, yeah, go to my Facebook page or email it to me at austin.onic at wreg.com. Uh, if you send it to the WREG, the main WREG page, sometimes it gets through, sometimes it doesn't. So your best bet would be to go to my page and send me a message or uh, post it on my page directly there. And that'll be your best bet on that. So the best thing you can do right there. If you do have photos, we'd love to see them. So go ahead and send them on through. If you'd like to know more about this, we'll be featuring more about the Skywarn safety meetings in the next few days. So stay tuned for that. Also coming up October 28th and November November 4th, Shelby County Office of Preparedness will be holding a CERT training class, uh, two of them actually, on two different days. And if you'd like to know more about that, all you have to do is go to staysafeshelby.us and you can find out more about what it takes to learn to become a certified or a community emergency response team uh, training session member. A great opportunity to learn more about this, what to do before, during, and after emergencies. You get to learn about and practice fire suppression, medical triage, uh, responding to hazmat, disaster preps, what to do to get a go bag ready to go, what to look for before something happens, terrorism, an attack, a chemical disaster, learning to be aware of your surroundings, very good class to take for that. It's a 16-hour course. It's taught over two days' time. It is time-intensive, but it is very well worth it, and it is one of the best classes that I have ever seen to help people get ready for either severe weather after effects, terrorism or because of where we live here in the Mid-South area for earthquakes. Speaking of which, we didn't talk about this just a little while ago. New Madrid Fault from the Center for Earthquake Research and Information. No earthquakes today. So good news on that. And if you'd like to know more about this, all you have to do is go to the uh, Center for Earthquake Research and Information at the University of Memphis at memphis.edu slash CERI, or more information available from the United States Geological Survey at earthquakes.usgs. Dot gov Tonight, if you'd like to take a look, and in just about a half an hour or so, in the north sky, an iridium flare will be happening, dropping down toward the horizon, going from just around the north star, and heading downwards just about right before 8.30. Uh, it fades into view, gets really bright, and then fades back out again. That's what an iridium flare does, is the solar panels begin to reflect light in a certain direction as the spacecraft tumbles through its orbit around the Earth. So if you'd like to see that, that'll be taking place again in about uh, just about a half an hour from now, just before 8.30. So be looking in the north skies down and to the right of the North Star, and you should be able to see that. That solar flare should be, again, not causing too much of a problem. That solar wind going on should not be too much to worry about. Tomorrow morning, a great junction conjunction of planets right before sunrise in Leo, right beneath the uh, star Regulus. This will be a great place to view it. Venus and Mars will be very close together. Venus will be much brighter than Mars will be, but it will be a nice sight to see out that direction. So find out more about that by going to uh, spaceweather.com to find out more about what this looks like. And over the next couple of days, they'll be getting very, very close together uh, in the skies right as sun begins to rise in the east. So you're going to have to look at this when it's still pretty dark outside to be able to see that. Mary Jewell, thanks, and jo thanks for joining us from uh, South Fulton as well. Uh, thank you very much. And thanks to everybody else for joining in for tonight. More on my Facebook page. Tons of information available here at facebook.com slash austinonic, W-R-E-G. Also on my uh, Instagram page, just past 3,000 posts. Thanks to everybody for helping out on that. And that's at aonic, no underscore necessary, W-R-E-G-3. Congratulations to Jim Jaggers doing another great day of cycling out that direction. And he's been doing a wonderful job uh, helping out Le Bonner Children's Hospital 
and getting some great fans out there. Today he was at uh, Southwest Eagles School. I'm not too sure exactly which that one that is, but actually he was at a whole bunch of different schools uh, for today, and that was a great opportunity to see more out there. So congratulations to Jim for doing a great job on Go Jim Go. My particular Twitter page, Aonic underscore WREG3. And thanks everybody for dropping by for some great stuff right there, including watching this, and also a great opportunity to see me well, when the screen is not frozen, all you have to do is take a look around and see what it looks like here on my uh, Periscope page, and you can join in and see more about what's going on here easily enough as well. We'll continue to keep you updated over the course of the next several days with stuff that is going on down in the tropics. Uh, we'll have more information easily coming up tomorrow morning, AM 730, Yahoo Sports Radio. Monday through Friday from 7 to 9 a.m. on with Bob and Josh and keeping you updated as to what's going on with the weather in and around the Mid-South and some great sports chat as well. If you can't listen on air, listen online at talkbacklivenetwork.org for more information <clears throat> Excuse me on that. Again, oh, uh, Bethany, give Marlo a belly rub. Yes, we took her for a uh, ride tonight to see uh, my daughter over at uh, her place of work over in the Cooper Young neighborhood tonight. She's feeling a little puny, so... Uh, we took Marlo over to visit her, and Marlo, by the way, is our shorty. If you don't know about Marlo, take a look at any of my social media pages, and you'll find right there. Kevin Dunn, nope, sorry, no quakes, no liquefaction going on, at least for right now, and here's hoping it stays that way. So this is going to be, again, uh, the possibility for nothing going on immediately out there. Questions, concerns, any ideas, please let me know, austin.onic at wreg.com slash weather, and would love to get your feedback on what you would like to see on here. So thank you very much. Live and direct from House Onic. I'm meteorologist Austin Onic. This has been a latest update just past the top of the hour at 8.01. Thanks for everybody for joining me for tonight on our latest edition of News Channel 3 Weather Overtime. Another update tomorrow morning, so stay tuned.